Hello YouTube, this is Neon, and today's talk is going to be my thoughts on Morris Solomon Jr., the Sacramental Slayer. Everything that I'm saying right now is not factual. My knowledge of the first documentary that I saw about him some time ago, and the information from it versus the information of having gone on Wikipedia just a few minutes ago differ a little bit in some of the facts. Some of what I read on Wikipedia about him doesn't jive with the, the first documentary I saw some years ago when I was obsessed with watching every serial killer documentary that I could watch. However, I will say this, my mind has gone hazy because I, I saw that documentary so long ago. The reason Morris Solomon Jr. stands out for me, this is assuming I'm not confusing him with another serial killer, and I'm not. I, this, this part is correct. The reason that he stands out for me is that there is a, uh, an incredible and profound sadness that goes beyond his murders. There's a deep and profound evil that goes beyond his murders, and it goes beyond him. And, and I will talk about that. So he stands out to me for that reason. That I will, I will go into detail with shortly. I wanted to say that he was abused, pro, he was abused uh, profusely and perversely throughout his childhood. He was brought up to about the age of 13, I believe, by his grandmother, who abused him perversely, beat him sometimes till he bled, beat him in the nude, beat his genitals. She was a sadist and she was a sexual sadist. Clearly. Now, did she sexually abuse this little him as a little boy as well? Wikipedia doesn't say that, but anytime a child's genitals are abused, there is sexual sadism involved. It may be emotional, psychological turn-on that the grandmother was getting, but a very perverse and evil woman. He did get the death penalty, ultimately, for his murders. I do not agree that he should have gotten the death penalty. And if he did get the death penalty, quite frankly, I think the grandmother and his mother should have gotten the death penalty. He ultimately went to live with his, I believe, his biological parents, and they were abusive to him as well. And they may have been sexually abusive as well as physically abusive. He was convicted of killing six, I believe all of them were women, I believe. And I believe that they were not all African American women. Morris Solomon Jr. was an African American serial killer. His killings took place outside of Sacramento, California, in the very poorest, crime-ridden sections of that city. Now, I may be wrong, but I believe the neighborhoods where most of his killings took place were Oak Park, Cannery Row, Trippin Alley, I think is how it's called, Tripin Alley. And his M.O. for killing these precious, beautiful women was he he would get women who were working in the sex trade industry, who were paid sex workers, and who, and generally speaking, who struggled with drug addiction. He would murder them, possibly in various ways, and he would bury them on the properties that he was pay, being paid to repair. He was a handyman who could rebuild old homes for entrepreneurs that were trying to make money, who would buy these broken down homes in these really poor vice ridden neighborhoods and they would pay him to repair these homes so they could make a profit. He would live in these homes a lot of times as he was repairing them. 
so he would contact he would make he would he would make contact with women who uh, he would pay them for sex and apparently use drugs with them and many of them he would kill there were numerous women who survived his attacks it was it was quite interesting because some he had stabbed some he had choked some he had beaten I believe one was confronted with a gun and all these women somehow managed to escape and with all of them there was an attempt at raping them as well so if that's an indicator of this man's murderous rage it would suggest that he probably killed these beautiful women in many different ways that's kind of unusual for a serial killer they generally have one way that they like to kill but there are there are exceptions and he's clearly one of those exceptions where he just killed however he's believed to have killed at least seven but one of the women that he killed they ended up dropping the charges most of the evidence against him is really powerful circumstantial evidence these various women on various properties that had been dug up their bodies were found and the date that I'm not sure if it's called the coroner but the person who investigates to try to find out how and when a person died they would they had determined that this person had been killed and buried during the days that this evil man was on that property preparing these properties he would live at these properties up to six months perhaps longer but he would stay for months at a time as he was repairing these homes he ultimately got himself caught he's really fascinating there's a tiny percentage of male serial killers that kill because they want to be famous they may not sexually they may they may not even sexually assault their victims they want to be famous they have a god complex and killing a person feeds their false sense of being god that fame that they're pursuing feeds their false sense of being God. And killing innocent lambs is worth it for them to get that. Now, many serial killers who kill, when it becomes boring, because they've killed so many people and gotten away with it, then they now want fame and recognition for what they've done. This is what got more Solomon Jr. caught. Now, there's two theories as to why he reported one of the murders that he committed. One was that he wanted attention. He had killed so many women, and these women were not valued. They were not valued by their family members, friends, or loved ones. Many of these women had never been reported missing. Nobody knew that there was a serial killer on the loose. So he had killed, I'm going to suggest, many more than seven women. Because ultimately, investigators stopped searching at prior properties to dig around the properties and find more bodies. But every time they went to a previous property, they were finding more bodies. So I believe more than seven women's bodies were found. He had killed, he got bored, and so he wanted to get attention, not realizing that nobody knew that he was a serial killer, that he had killed so many women. As I said, many of these women were not even valued by their family members, and they had never even been report, reported missing. Wikipedia suggests that he reported that he had found a woman on, on a property, excuse me, that he had been working on because he didn't want to get caught. He was afraid that he was going to get caught, so he went and reported it. Now, I believe the documentary said that he essentially did it because he wanted attention and notoriety for his murders. He had 
and I don't know how he had killed this particular woman on this property, but he killed her, raped her, and the weather was such that even though her body had sat for, I believe, three days, so quite a few days, the semen was still intact, her body had not rotted, her body was in good shape. So he reported it, and they were able to match his DNA to her, to the semen that was on her body. And that's how he got himself caught. So his motives, there's a little, it's a little dubious as to what his true motives were for getting himself caught. I believe he wanted attention. He wanted to see himself in the papers, and he wanted to be able to scare all of Sacramento as being this great serial killer that was on the loose. That's my opinion. Apparently, the search for bodies actually wound up happening because perhaps on that property, that very same property, when, a detect when the, they were investigating, one of the, one of the investigators noted, noted a depression in the ground and decided to dig and there was a body. And they began to dig and they found several bodies there on his, on his property, this home of the home he had been working on, and they went to previous properties and found bodies. So he really got himself busted. He did get the death penalty. I don't believe he deserved the death penalty. I believe he deserved life without parole because I know what extreme abuse is and his abuse was even more extreme than my abuse. And the only reason why I didn't turn to a life of crime was because people came into my life to rescue me. Otherwise, I would have turned to a life of crime that could have resulted in innocent people losing their lives. I don't believe anybody came to rescue this man. I don't believe he deserves the death penalty. I believe he is still in, sitting on San Quentin to this day on death row. Now according to my memory of the documentary that I had seen on him, when the case went to trial, to, to my understanding, he was initially tried for seven murders, or twelve murders, and I'm not sure if that's the seven murders plus the five women that had accused him of attempted murder, or assault, or assault and attempted rape. So I'm a little confused about that, but I believe it was initially for many more, much more than seven murders. And what they said is that having notified many of the family members of these women who had been brutally murdered, that m m many of them, nobody showed up to the court case. They said a total of 12 people showed up. And I may be wrong here, but I believe he was being tried for seven, for I, I'm getting angry because I'm not speaking correctly at that moment. Now I'm speaking correctly again. I believe he had been tried for 12 murders. And throughout the trial, no more than seven family, friends, or loved ones ever showed up for the trial. Some of the women who had been murdered, no one ever showed up for the trial to even see that there would be a conviction for her murder. That's the deep sadness that it, it makes you question your existence in this world. That if family members can reach a point in their life that their devaluation of their daughter, their sister, their granddaughter, their cousin is so low there's, that there's no value at all, that they don't even show up for court to see that the person who murdered their family member is going to be made to pay for his crime. It makes me think, do I even want to live in a world where clearly blood, blood is not thicker than water? Where the death of a loved one, of, of a family member, because clearly they're not a loved one, where death of a family member of our own blood doesn't even matter. It really does make, it really made me question my existence in the world and it is that deep sadness and it's that deep and profound and ugly evil that I saw that is outside of Morris Solomon Jr.'s murders. That's the evil of these family members themselves that stuns me and shocks me and was very very hard to, to accept. Those are my thoughts. Please like, subscribe, share, comment, commercials, recommend my videos. Do one or more of those things. Thank you.